Welcome to Come to Think of It, a program where we talk about things that matter. I'm your host, Casey Scott, and today my guest once again is Roger Lockhart. Welcome to the program, Roger. Thank you, Casey. Roger is an addictions counselor of uh, great repute, and we are uh, doing a series on the nature of addiction, a uh, fascinating topic, and this is the fifth in our program, our series. Um, and um, we, uh, last time we're, we, we began talking about the technologies of addiction, and we didn't get very far because um, it's, a, it's a big subject and there was a lot of introduction, but um, I want to, um, before we go on, I want to uh, basically, I want to, to make clear once again that um, we're not speaking about um, necessarily the physiological addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're speaking about um, what you have termed a, an addictive relationship with a technology. Mm -hmm. And by technology, we're referring to a system of control or management. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, in, an, in an off-camera conversation that we had recently, I, I made the observation that, I, 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 in my experience, I felt that the only things I could really control are my attitudes and my behavior. Mm and uh, you objected to the word control in that. And I would like for you to just give me a, a little bit um, on that for the benefit of our audience, because I know where you were going with it, and I think that's a, it's a really important point. Mm -hmm. um, well, my, my wariness is because of my uh, uh, understanding that right at the core, at the nexus of uh, of the addictive predicament is a belief system that is fatally flawed, as it were. And in that belief system, control is exalted. As the, as uh, in the same conversation, I shared with you a, a concise little summation that I had come up with a few days earlier when I was making a presentation at a local college. And I had offered the observation that in the beginning of every addiction, it feels like the technology, the control methodology, uh, is the optimal pathway to fulfillment. Mm. Over the course of time, the uh, relationship with the technology degenerates in, a, in a, a trajectory that is under the kind of misleading name of progression. <laughs> since it doesn't feel like this is progress <laughs> uh, in any happy sense of the word, uh, to the point where it's no longer the optimal pathway to fulfillment. It feels like the necessary pathway. It's the only pathway that, that the addict f has any hope mm -hmm. will deliver the goods. And over the course of yet more progression, what we find is <laughs> that the technology is necessary, period. And what we've done there is we've, we've lost the presence of fulfillment yeah. and, uh, and a, just a dreadful irony. And one that has played out in gazillions of uh, uh, classics of literature and uh, mythology over thousands of years, uh, ranging from Gilgamesh to uh, uh, Pinocchio. Yes, or the Great Gatsby, which we were speaking oh, about. Exactly. The other day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, because that notion of control, and control, as I mentioned in our earlier talk, control is all about uh, insisting on results. So, the language that I offered and continue to offer as an alternative is uh, those areas where we can legitimately take responsibility mm. as distinct from control yeah. are uh, attitudes and um, intent, what, d effort, was that? Uh, yeah, attitude and behavior. And behavior, yes, exactly, yes. right. Yep. It, it, I think that's, that's um, 
It's striking to me that those are uh, those are key ingredients of recovery, which we're not talking about yet, but, mm -hmm. but that relinquishment of control and, um, and uh, the anticipation of the result. Um, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. those, are, those are really mm -hmm. key uh, ingredients to recovery. The indispensable starting points. Yes, yes. Um, in my previous uh, conversations with Gary Earls on this program, uh, we talked about ADHD at one point, and uh, we observed that all of the symptoms of ADHD are ordinary, normal behaviors, and that the diagnostic criteria describe the ways in which those behaviors um, are um, in an extreme form an impediment to uh, the person. Mm -hmm. And uh, I find that to be a useful model in looking at uh, addictions. Because when I started thinking about that, and, and these are some of the things that we talked about last time. We talked a little bit about, about the, uh, the importance of ritual. We talked about habit. Um, we've talked a lot about the fulfillment of longing. Um, then there's the pursuit of pleasure. Um, and... and uh, uh, then there's also uh, emotional disturbance, anticipation, all of these things which, which are part mm -hmm. of addiction, perfectly normal, even essential ingredients mm -hmm. of what it is to be human. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we did not pursue pleasure, then we'd all starve to death and, the, and there wouldn't be any procreation of the species. We would have been extinct a long time ago. So there are a great many and, and uh, ritual and habit we can't live without. So. Mm -hmm. All of these things are, are normal pieces of, of human behavior, but um, in addiction become extreme and, and, uh, and impede our, our ability to function. Help me remember, Casey, if I've already shared the, uh, uh, the characterization, which is not new with me, that uh, addicts are like everybody else, only more only so. Only more so, yes. <laughs> I don't believe have we touched on that. And I don't believe we have a, no, a more sort of a clinical sounding uh, rendering of the same sentiment is that uh, addiction is acute and chronic human nature. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. And it, that's what it feels like. Yeah. That's definitely what it feels like. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, my wife is constantly reminding me that I'm not so unique. Mm-hmm. You thank her for that. I do, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so having said all of that, I, th I think w it's time now that, that we can move on to, to discussing uh, a very interesting breakdown of these technologies that, that you have. And I'm, we're just, I just want to read the list, and then we can mm -hmm. talk about them mm -hmm. uh, one at a time. Um, uh, some are familiar and some not so familiar, mm -hmm. um, starting with uh, substance, behavior, relationship, ideology, affect, cognition, gesture, and finally pathology. Mm -hmm. So um, where do we where do we want to start with this? And I guess we start with substance because that's the one that everybody is, is right. most keenly aware of. And the one that people uh, most reflexively associate with the whole idea of addiction. Mm. Uh, people who are perhaps more attentive and uh, uh, conscious of these issues are also likely to have a sense of behavioral addictions and relationship addictions, mm -hmm. being addicted to being a caretaker, um, sexual addictions, and so forth. But mm -hmm. after that, the list tends to get uh, fairly arcane for most folks, ideology, affect, pathology, right. that sort of thing. Um, and I guess one of the things that I would want to, uh, not caveats exactly, but uh, I want to I be very clear that this is not the definitive way of parsing or uh, uh, taking apart uh, the addictive process. Um, it's a way to systematically think about it and 
as I mentioned to you before this, the show started, uh, paradoxically somewhat, I'm taking it apart in order that we can get a kind of a um, overall view of it such that the underlying simplicity really starts to disclose itself. Mm -hmm. and, and we realize, uh, and we've already gotten, I think, a sense of that, that all of these particular addictions which may manifest in an individual's life radically different ways, behaviors, um, uh, narrative, so forth and so on, that the underlying predicament and the, under, and the, the, uh, the overriding trajectory, the storyline, you know, what I was just describing, the uh, technology is the optimal path, the necessary path, and then just necessary. The, right. And all of these technologies will fit that that meta description. Um, and the other thing that I'd like to say is that none of these, I, I have never, it, uh, setting aside the idea of f physical addiction, which really is not what we're talking about right. here as we've it, established. Yeah, you need, need to be very clear yeah, about that all the way through. That we're not addiction. talking about physiological addiction. Yeah, it's whatsoever. important right. and it's a straightforward physiological process, sometimes very disturbing and alarming, dangerous, yeah. but it's straightforward. And, 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 and can be essentially broken by abstinence. Uh, well, and, which and is not necessarily the case with some, the underlying addiction that we're talking indeed. about. Right, yeah. So um, I have never seen any of these technologies, what we're calling technologies, systematic methods of manipulation, um, entirely absent some of the others. Mm -hmm. I believe in an earlier conversation, in fact, I talked about um, having met alcoholics who were quite progressed in their, their neediness, but for whom um, the, the circumstantial, the, the um, relational, for example, the gestural uh, dimension of the location of being in a bar was so central to their drinking that they just did not drink, yeah. uh, even though they were quite, quite uh, addicted. Yes. So we'll, we'll find uh, interplay among all of them, but again, in order to have some clarity, I, I find it useful to yeah. first distinguish each and mm. then. But there is, again, there is that, that, that element of habit and ritual that, that mm -hmm. is so, uh, preponderant in this whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's, these are the kinds of issues that I think people have a lot of trouble with. Uh, first of all, to distinguish what we're talking about from the physiological addiction. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to be able to, to, once you make that that distinction, it's easy to see how one can be addicted to sex, for example. Mm -hmm. Whereas, um, a lot of ordinary right thinking people w w would not see that and, and would say, well, this is just would bad not, behavior. Oh, right. Would not see it as Would a, not see that, so, the, as that one could be addicted to sex or that one could be addicted entanglement. to entanglement. Yes. Right. You know, or any number of things that, that well, were. Probably that, all of these things. That is to say, for every technology, there are the naysayers, including the classical ones, alcoholism, heroin, so mm, forth and so sure. on. Because, in part, because. Um, there are always people out there whose storyline indeed was, you know what, I did it, and I did it prodigiously, and I got in a lot of trouble, and I got fed up and I quit. Right. So anybody could do that if they had right. the character and the strength sure. of will and so forth and so on, yeah. and that, that's their earnest conviction. Right. And uh, as I don't know if I've mentioned this, but one of the really most challenging situations to be in is to be the addict child of a parent who had the problem use profile. Mm. Where Actually, I don't know that willpower we have and common about sense that. was sufficient for dad or mom, and why the heck can't Junior get it? Yeah. <clears throat> and by the way, Junior feels exactly the same way. Sure. Why can't I get it? Sure. So What's wrong with me? Yeah. 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 Hmm. So um, <clears throat> let's let's go on then. Uh, 
and talk about the behavior, behavioral well, addiction. I was wondering if you wanted me to just kind of like go right down the list and riff on it, each thing a little bit, um, given our propensity for um, getting getting in, into the engaged detail. into sure. yeah sure go um, ahead. Just the the list again is substance behavior, relationship, ideology, affect, cognition gesture and pathology. Mm -hmm. So very glancingly, substance, of course, everybody knows that. But I, I, I think most people who hear us talk about substance addictions are going to be thinking in terms of mood altering chemicals, mm -hmm. pharmaceuticals, alcohol, so forth and so on. I'm including food. Yes. And um, as I don't know if I've mentioned in this series, uh, I'm absolutely, uh, I have no doubt that the addictive entanglements which, with food, which for example include anorexia and bulimia, um, but uh, overwhelmingly the, the overeating and the uh, problems associated with that kill more people in the world than all of the classical chemical addictions sure. combined. Sure. Um, so substance, I think we don't have to dwell on. Behavior, again, that's somewhat familiar. People are aware, if, they, if they're paying a certain amount of attention, that people get addicted to work, that people get addicted to exercise, and addicted in the, in the full resonant sense where they go to the doctor and they, they, they are crippled they have something wrong with their shins or their knees or whatever part of themselves, the doctor says you absolutely have to forego whatever it is, jogging, right, yeah. sprinting, blah, blah, blah. And the person leaves the office with a deep inner dedication to that plan. They're not, they're not being... Um, uh, deceptive. Mm -hmm. They're not intending to be deceptive. And the next morning they wake up and where do we find them? Out there, you know, jogging along in pain, but really finding that uh, they are compelled yeah. to continue this behavior. Yeah. Probably saying no pain, no gain the whole way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there are the things, uh, well, exercise of course is virtuous, as is work. And so it's, it's really challenging. I mean, it's one thing if you're hiding in a back hallway sneaking your heroin, you know, it's like, okay, well, at least this is pretty clear. This is not uh, a highly... Uh, it's not socially acceptable. It's, it's not applauded. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Whereas work, working 60 hours a week oh, often is. Oh, very often. Yeah. And, and in some of the most unfortunate uh, venues, such as medicine. Mm -hmm. The people who are involved in health care often set just the worst examples. And not always, but very often, they have their own addictive diet. They're, they're hooked on this, yeah. uh, the thrill of this uh, uh, process. And again, I want to emphasize that for every single addict, there is an absolutely unique uh, pattern of reinforcers constellation of reinforcers that uh, weave amongst and uh, uh, cybernetically, recursively reinforce one another. Um, and that's, that's true for alcoholism, it's true for, for work addiction and so forth. The relationship behaviors are, uh, as I mentioned earlier, caretaking, um, but just to give a sense of the scope of, of how I'm enlisting this idea of categories of technology, one example of a relationship behavior that could be addictive is a hermit. Mm -hmm. That's the, in effect, the anorectic rendering of codependency. Sure. What about antagonism? Oh, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, being uh, one of the uh, very commonplace renderings of codependency is uh, 
requiring an audience and um, really suffering from withdrawal if they don't have access mm -hmm. to an audience. Yeah. So again, we could we could get stuck on any one. Well, of normally these, we think of the of a relationship addiction in terms of a romantic romance entanglement or caretaking. Those yeah, are the or two. Or caretaking, yes. Codependent. One of the things yes. that I often say, I don't believe I've mentioned it here, is that uh, because of the history of how the notion of codependency entered into our awareness and into our vocabulary, um, which is worth mentioning, I think, because codependency is a funny word. Yes, it is. It it's is. a funny word, and it, it's not as disclosing as we often wish for our language to be. It's, yes, you can it's kind of force it in to work. But, yeah. um, the term codependency had its origins back in the uh, mid to late 70s, when people were doing research with uh, families where there was alcoholism. And uh, they made the very astute observation that it was not uncommon for the non-drinking members of the family where there was alcoholism to be more reactive to the presence or absence of drinking on the part of the drinker than the drinker themselves. Yes. And so their first working hypothesis was my goodness, it was not even so much a hypothesis as just a, uh, a premise, a characterization. They said, my goodness, these people are, even though they don't themselves consume or problematically consume, they are co-dependent on the alcohol. That, oh. was, that was the original, uh, they're the, see, now that, in that setting, co-dependent makes perfect sense. Yes. But happily, and not surprisingly, it wasn't a great long time before further study, further uh, reflection and uh, examination disclosed what's really going on is the codependents are dependent on the alcoholic. Yes. And now it makes perfect sense that they're going to be hypercharged about whether or not there's alcohol in the system because it's going to have such a, uh, uh, enormous and potentially problematic uh, effect on the object of their addiction, which is the alcoholic. Yes. Um, uh, in, in, interestingly, uh, I, I, I know a, uh, a man who is uh, a sober alcoholic of, of many, many years who frequently will say, you have to care enough not to care. Hmm. Which I find to be, I, I have found that to be a very useful thing uh, hmm. in terms of I interrupting my uh, I interest in becoming wrapped up in somebody else's uh, issues, mm -hmm. even somebody I'm very close to. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm sympathetic with the sentiment, but I I don't agree with the language again. Well, I think the language is is intentionally jarring. So. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, but the, the, the reason that I would sort of stay with it uh, as an objection is because too many people succeed in doing exactly that. Uh -huh. they, they care enough in the sense, but they're, in this case they're not caring for the other person so much as they are coming to some awareness that if I keep caring the way that I am, this is going to eat me alive. Uh -huh. And so because they haven't found their way to the, the, you know, the classical um, uh, Al-Anon prescription, which is to detach with love. Yes. And we'll get to that. I don't know if we'll make it today, but uh, we'll definitely talk about codependency. Uh, because they haven't found their way to that, they, um, they strive for and all too often succeed in quashing, repressing the caring. And that's a, a dreadful happening for all yes. parties. Right. And it does not advance the prospect of sobriety. It doesn't prohibit it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't advance it at all. Yeah. Um, in a professional setting, one of the observations I've made, I think I've mentioned here that I worked in detox settings for seven years. And that's very much the front lines. And uh, what I've observed is that there are three possible outcomes. Uh, for someone who starts working on a detox. Uh, one is um, 
they burn out and leave. Okay. Common. Um, the other is that they uh, learn detachment and stay. Mm -hmm. And the third, unfortunately, is that they burn out and stay. <laughs> also probably too common. Way too common yeah. and gravely unfortunate for all parties, yeah. including them. They're not happy campers, but you know, for whatever reason, typically some mm -hmm. version of codependent addictive dynamic. Yeah. But sometimes just the pragmatics of their life situation. They, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let's, yeah. let's move on with our list sure. so make sure that we get all the way exactly. through it here. Yeah. Uh, so th those are the three that everyone has some sense of substance, behavior, relationship, ideology. You know, when I first made this list, it was not as, I think, transparent as it is now. But if we look around the world, well, uh, you and I happen to be talking at a time when they're still searching for the uh, second perpetrator of the St. Patrick's Day. Or the uh, um, Patriots uh, Day. The Patriots of the Boston Marathon. Right. Yeah, Patriots yeah. Day. And um, again and again, you will find people on every side of these ideological contentious issues who have an addictive relationship with that ideology and its uh, and the acting on it, whether it's signing a gazillion petitions online or bomb throwing mm -hmm. uh, or, or many other things. Yeah. Um, and as in every case, I want to make it clear that I'm not saying that ideology, that everyone who's ideologically invested or passionate is uh, therefore addicted at all. I'm just simply saying that this is one modality through which we can accomplish that existential manipulation that is the, the signature of addiction. Well, p part of, the, part of the, the, the problem with this whole construct in terms of wrapping one's brain around it is, is the, the, that there, there is a very fine line, if there's a line at all, mm -hmm. between uh, passion and obsession. Mm. So w it's, it, and all of these things are, are again, they're, they're essential. Uh, they're, mm -hmm. they're a part of, of the human experience. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, Casey, I would, um, I would say that the line between passion and obsession, contrary to appearances, is not fine at all. And, and for me, one of the uh, ready and principal ways to make that distinction is if I'm passionate about something, that means I abandon myself to the effort if it turns out that I don't succeed, I'm okay. I'm just disappointed, I may be terribly disappointed, but I am okay. If I'm obsessed and I don't succeed, I'm not okay. Ah, that's the difference. Very good, very yeah. good. Thank you very much. Sure. That uh, 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 resonates with something else you said uh, uh, about um, pursuing fulfillment with uh, oh, passion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that what's critical is not to succeed in our striving for fulfillment, but to strive with passion and integrity. Yeah. And passion implies wholeheartedness. Yes, yes, wonderful. And, and unfortunately, an excellent place to end this conversation ah, for today. We've and done we it again. Will, we've done it again, and we will pick this up where we left off. And thank you once again. My for pleasure, being Casey, with us always. Uh, Look forward to it. These are very, very enriching uh, conversations for me, and I value it very much. So. As do I. And thank you for being with us on Come to Think of It. I hope you'll be with us next time. And until then, drive cheerfully. I'm Casey Scott.